Hi, I'm Becky Gerritsen, Executive Director with Eagle Forum of Alabama, and I have a special guest with me today. Malia Stevens is a board member for the National Center of, on Sexual Exploitation. NICOSI is the short way to say that. And now that people are quarantined and they're really on the internet a lot, especially children, we just have some big concerns about how parents can help their children through this time. And Malia, thank you so much for being with me today. It's a pleasure. Thank you for having me. You bet. I met you about a year ago um, at a big summit in Washington, D.C., addressing some of these issues with pornography. And I just kind of wanted to talk a little bit about what are some of the things that you are seeing in your practice? You are a marriage and family counselor. Um, during this quarantine time, are you seeing an uptick in children being exposed to pornography? Well, in my private practice, I'm not exactly seeing that specifically, but I know from reading the research and understanding what's happening right now that there definitely is a major uptick. I think that recent estimates said that pornography use is up 19 percent, 18 to 19 percent since the lockdown started. So and that's that's a lot uh, when you know how large the numbers already are uh, with pornography consumption. So we have some stats. I wanted just to talk with you a little bit. I think a lot of parents out there, they don't realize what a big problem this is. So are you able to see the stats on the screen? Yes, I sure can. When I, I've heard people come and, and they say, hey, this is, this is just a moral issue. There's nothing wrong with this, but explain some of these stats and what you're seeing in your practice and as a board member on NACOSI, how is this affecting society? Well, as a marriage and family therapist for the last 20 years in private practice, I became very familiar with the devastating effects of pornography uh, to the brain relationships in society, in particular, hardcore internet pornography, which is now mainstream pornography that people are consuming. And as an aside, people don't realize that hardcore pornography is actually illegal. We're not enforcing mm -hmm. our existing federal obscenity laws. So softcore porn is, is technically legal, but it's also not allowed on the internet if we're doing all that. But basically, people are being exposed to this highly addictive material and it hijacks the frontal lobe of the brain, creating cognitive issues, emotional issues, relational problems, and even physical problems. So... In fact, you know, Alabama became the 15th state to declare pornography a public health crisis because of the ov overwhelming research that indicates that this is a really big problem affecting our society. Uh, so what I saw in my private practice was marriages being affected in terms of increased rates of infidelity and sexual abuse. But what I began to see over time was younger people, younger individuals, male and female, college students, high school students, junior high students, culminating to when in 2010 to 2012, I saw very young children who were addicted to pornography. Uh, families brought their kids in, not because I specialize in children, I typically work with adults, but they brought in their kids because they knew I had worked with adults with pornography addiction and sex addiction issues. And these little kids that were just precious, raised in good homes, had been exposed at a neighbor's house or by accident on their own computer. And it created um, obsessive compulsive acting out on other children and playmates. And mm -hmm. they had a huge drive to get access to this material. So that that is kind of how I got thrust into this whole um, fight to end all forms of sexual exploitation because at the same time I was seeing trafficking victims and realizing that uh, pornography app actually fuels the demand for trafficking victims. And a lot of what we see online is pornography made of trafficking victims that were forced to create it and forced to look, look like they like it. So it's just this big web of in, you know, of intersection intersectionality between all forms of sexual exploitation. Um, and so, Understanding that uh, is, is important as you look at this issue to know some of the background, but to understand how it's affecting children, um, it, it's just good, good homes, good parents don't realize that when you give your child an iPhone or a device that's not really filtered, monitored, protected, you're giving them a triple X store right. uh, that they just have immediate access to. And if you think about that, you would never take your child to a triple X store because you can understand how that 
destroys their innocence and affects their sexual template, the way that they view themselves in relationships. Um, so, so that's that's really what parents need to be aware aware about. I can go into great detail if you want me to tell more about it later, but but that's a, a you know an overview to answer your question of the harms. So I have talked to some young people that are in elementary school, and they've all seen porn. I, mm -hmm. I'm amazed, and I think that parents really don't understand. And especially in this time of quarantine, they may be getting tired of the kids. It's great to have them home, but when you're with them all day long, you just right. want to go to their room. And so they go in their room, shut the door, and they are on the internet, and they are in the X-rated areas, and the parents don't even know. Exactly. I know Nicosi has some tips. So let's just go through what are some I think there are five really great tips that parents can do with their children during this time. Can you talk about those? Yeah, I'd love to. One of the best things parents can do and other caregivers is to just hold a family meeting on exactly why you're concerned and to sit down with the kids and, and, and in an age appropriate way, explain to them some of the concerns and the uh, digital dangers that are out there and why you want to protect them and protect their their brain, their mm -hmm. innocence, their relationships. And our website in sexualexploitation.org actually has some really great helpful tips about how to begin that conversation, how to facilitate it in an age appropriate way. And also there's a wonderful website uh, called protectyoungminds.org. Mm -hmm. They mm -hmm. have a book called Good Pictures, Bad Pictures that helps inoculate children from the inside out. It's a very safe age appropriate book that they have for age one to six and then from seven to 12. Uh, I highly recommend it because it helps children be protected before they even see pornography. So that would be the first step. Secondly, after you talk to your child about your concerns, you want to talk to them about their personal internet usage. It's mm. really good to understand how much time they spend on each device. What apps do they like to use? Does their video game system have online features, live chat, direct messaging? These are really important questions you need to ask in order to get the full picture of how your child spends their time online. Uh, you may learn a lot about things you did not realize they have um, vulnerabilities to. Number three, uh, set up parental controls on their devices. And this may seem overwhelming to some parents, but again, we have really easy how-to guides on our website. If you want to go to our website, I guess we're going to get that information at the end. But um, you also want to investigate the controls available for each app and system and take time to set those up. It's It may be a little you know, take a little time at first, but it is wonderful to protect your home. It's just like you wouldn't leave your child's windows and doors unlocked at night for predators to come in. You've got to lock down these devices because that's exactly what we're leaving them vulnerable to. Um, also, so, Lily, mm -hmm. would you suggest parents not allowing them to sleep with them in their rooms? Or is there a time where parents should take them away for several hours during the day um, just to help them not be addicted and not, not just necessarily to porn, but just um, mm -hmm. how do you do yeah. that with your family? And we'll get back to those four, but is that a good idea to do? Oh, absolutely. And that's a good segue actually into number four too. Um, but that, th yes, you want to understand how to limit time spent online because your the, their development, their, their brain development will be hindered if they have unlimited time online and they they'll miss their childhood actually. So they'll be living a virtual childhood. And yes. So one thing we recommend is uh, schedule time during the day for no electronics and think about setting rules for where electronics can be used, such as only allowing personal internet devices in public rooms, such as the family room or the living room and limiting screen time your child has uh, it's to protect them from dangers. But like in our home, we have our children are not allowed are not allowed to take devices up into their rooms upstairs away from the family. Nice. They're allowed to have an, an audio device to listen to stories and things like that or music, but they're not allowed to have any screens upstairs. We have one central television TVs and and uh, any screens are only allowed in family shared space at our house. Um, and, you know, the kids are comfortable with that now. That's how we, they've grown up. Uh, but you just want to ensure that your children are living a balanced lifestyle with plenty of time away from screens, plenty of time to use their creativity and imagination. Great. OK, so now to number four. That was that was actually number four. Limit. Yeah. Limit time spent online. 
Um, but to, to uh, one other piece about number three, about setting up parental controls, in addition to controls on their devices, you might want to visit our website to look at parent guides for the different apps and, mm. so, and social media, because those are a little bit different and you kind of have to know each each one. So we have parent guides on Twitter, Snapchat, Netflix, Amazon, and others that are really important because those are uh, definite entry points for trouble if yeah. you aren't looking at that. Lastly, number five is to talk to your your school, the child's school, about what safety features they have, especially if the, the school issues Chromebooks, if they have protected you know, Wi-Fi yeah. services and and to just increase connections and, and accountability with the administration and the teachers, because sometimes that's where kids get exposed is there's a gap between the school devices and the home. Uh, sometimes children are exposed on the school bus on the way home um, through other children's devices and, and just everybody linking arms to come together as a community to protect children is necessary at this time. And the more parents communicate and the more they support each other and teachers and administration, the better we are um, at making sure we've got all eyes on our kids. Well, I wanna thank you for your help on, on this issue. We will be back to talk about a lot more of these kind of issues. Thank you so much for your time. And we will put the links below for people to find these five steps and they can go to www.endsexualexploitation.org. And thank you so much for being here. Thank you, Becky. Enjoyed it.